Hi, uh, so the topic of this presentation is called AI security challenges and AI security is one of the most underestimated uh, cyber security areas right now. So my name is Alex, I spent last 15 years in cybersecurity from penetration tester and researcher to uh, application security manager and CTO and now a founder. And I also uh, tried all the areas like from network to uh, uh, endpoint to application and now to AI. And we found uh, just a year ago uh, with my colleagues um, a new startup called Adversa. Uh, and our mission is inc to increase trust in AI systems because um, what, why it's so important. Last year I spent uh, a lot of time like, traveling uh, all around the world and asking absolutely different people from like Amazon jungle to the markets in Oman, uh, like would they sit in the self-driving car? And most of the people say, no, like I don't trust this. Uh, and I, I also don't trust the autonomous car until it will fail to uh, recognize uh, a kid uh, instead of a con or vice versa. So I, I don't trust it as well. And so we understood that trust to new technology is very important. And one of the uh, key trust areas is actually security. So our mission is to, to bring the most, uh, the smartest researchers and cybersecurity experts, engineering experts and neuroscientists uh, to work together and to create some innovative solutions to, to, to protect uh, AI systems. And the agenda for this uh, presentation is um, quite broad uh, because what I'm trying to do is to give you an idea of AI security in just 40 minutes. And to do that I want to answer a number of questions. So the questions you see in the slide, those are the most important questions to cover to understand each area that you want. So why it's important, like what it is, uh, who uses, when it started, where it's uh, located and how actually does it work. So let's start with why. Why it's the most important question. Uh, why AI security is uh, different and why should we care about it? Yeah, because first of all, the traditional software made by like um, a program logic, powered by program logic, while AI systems are powered by uh, machine learning techniques. So, and those approaches are absolutely different and when we talk about the interaction with traditional software we mostly talk about the like, graphical user interfaces with menus and buttons and commands that you enter so most of the typical attacks on traditional software are actually uh, improper validation of some kind of structured inputs like SQL injection for example while in AI uh, the interaction are uh, mostly the cognitive and uh, solutions parse like a vision or audio or natural language. And attacks here are basically have the same approach, trying to, to poison some data. But here we have like unstructured data. So when we talk about the traditional software, we have like traditional injections like SQL injection and we kind of know how to uh, understand if it's input or uh, valid or malicious because we have some kind of understanding of this data but in AI systems 
for example, in visual data, we don't really know how to, you know, uh, separate the malicious uh, data and non-malicious data. So the, the, the threat landscape is really changing and we need to have uh, a new solutions here. Why it's important uh, now? Um, mostly, first of all, because, uh, because of the research progress uh, and currently we have more than 2,000 different research papers about different practical aspects of AI security. We also have a number of different uh, public initiatives, uh, like for example, DARPA is uh, created a grant for uh, AI security uh, program. And we also have a number of market uh, sites, uh, a number of companies started to provide AI security services and new startups uh, like ours. And also the Gartner also highlighted the AI security topic as one of the strategic trends for 2020. And why it's important in general, because in AI as in any traditional, uh, like old school solutions, we also have confidentiality, integrity and availability. And for all those risks, we have examples. We have examples of confidentiality uh, with Netflix um, data set uh, incident. Uh, we have integrity issues like uh, facial recognition solutions were bypassed during a, a Hong Kong protest. And for example, the malware detection system from Silence, uh, the machine learning based malware detection system was also bypassed because of the vulnerabilities in machine learning algorithms. And like self driving cars, they also, uh, you know, uh, causes different cars to actually to crash because of the uh, potential attacks and the vulnerabilities in. Um, machine learning algorithms. So we have examples, we already have examples of uh, uh, different uh, real issues in, in AI. So what is uh, AI? Uh, it all starts with data and different uh, AI solutions uh, actually uh, deal with different data. Most of the uh, attacks on AI are actually against the image-based uh, machine learning applications, more than 60% of attacks. Um, then we have algorithms and there are different you know, algorithms uh, to deal with the data like classification, regression, clustering, dimensionality reduction, association uh, association rule learning, etc. Uh, currently we see more uh, attack examples against classification, uh, probably around 80-90% uh, of all attacks, but it doesn't mean that other algorithms are not vulnerable. They are also vulnerable and there are examples about attacks on uh, all types of algorithms but it's just because the classification is more um, uh, usable now. And when we combine the data and the algorithms, we actually have the application. So there are different um, applications uh, uh, as of now, and those are uh, the most popular uh, in terms of the number of research papers focused on those the security of those applications so you see uh, image classification of course is most common but we also have the uh, face recognition malware detection and speech recognition uh, those are the most uh, common applications then uh, the next question is uh, who actually use those AI solutions um, and I would say that AI uh, is it's everywhere now, or uh, even if not now, it will be in the near future. 
And here in the slides you can see like top 10 AI powered industries. Uh, those are the, the most common right now, like automotive and even healthcare, uh, and even cybersecurity. They those all those industries are AI powered now. Uh, and among those industries, uh, we can tell that some of them are more or less uh, analyzed by uh, researchers. So here you see the top five. Uh, industries uh, that have the biggest number of uh, research papers focused particularly on uh, this um, industry. So you see like internet and cyber security and biometrics like face recognition are the most common. But it doesn't mean that uh, only those industries are uh, affected. Actually if we calculate uh, not the number of uh, particular uh, papers focused on a particular industry, are, but the papers which can be uh, applicable to each industry. We can see uh, a much bigger uh, figures and we can, can actually say that you know, most of the research papers, uh, even if they about uh, like image classification, they really applicable to most of the uh, industries because you can you can find like classification uh, tasks everywhere pretty much everywhere so i just want to say that uh all industries are kind of equally affected uh in general so the next question is when uh, it was started and where are we going and uh, where are the most interesting uh, things happening. Uh, first of all, the number of research papers uh, about AI security, as I said before, is, is growing, is growing uh, really fast. And I would say, like in 2016, when I uh, first started. Uh, uh, work in this area, I was able to analyze each new uh, research paper. Now I can't do that because like you have at least like three to five research papers about this topic like every day. Uh, I, I would say that uh, there were no uh, papers about AI security like before 2010. Uh, of course they were and probably the first examples of really AI, uh, like AI security papers were in 2004 uh, but the most um, intriguing point I think was in 2015 with the publication of first uh, paper about adversarial attacks against uh, neural networks and this is where when actually everything started. Um, we can also look at the uh, different countries and of course we can see that the US is actually leading here and then we have China and then uh, we have the rest of the most of the European countries uh, but I, what I would say is that the, the number of research papers from China is actually growing much faster and probably we can see in a, in a few years like US and China uh, again sharing the first and the second uh, place but I won't be really sure that uh, US will be on the first uh, place in a few years but let's see. Uh, and also what we have here is uh, different initiatives that uh, actually those countries are uh, making based on their uh, research and probably the first uh, initiative uh, where security of AI was mentioned uh, was published in US in 2016 
and then a number of other countries uh, joined uh, this trend and published uh, other uh, AI security uh, or AI initiatives uh, with different security topics covered. And, th and then we see a number of uh, initiatives uh, which were particularly focused on security. Uh, they started to uh, appear in 2019. Uh, and we predict that in 2020 and 2021, uh, the rest of the countries uh, will join uh, the same trend and they will publish uh, actually AI security initiatives and probably uh, different uh, laws or uh, regulation rules and etc. Okay, now I think the most interesting part is how uh, actually uh, AI security is, is working. So, what are the attacks? So what are the approaches and defenses and so on? So, let's start with attacks. Uh, first of all, there are like three big categories of uh, AI attacks. The first one is manipulation, when we try to somehow manipulate with the input so that uh, the system will wrongly recognize our input. Then we have an extraction, uh, which is quite the opposite. Uh, our goal is to extract some data from machine learning module. Uh, and there are different types of ex data extraction. Uh, some attacks uh, can extract the, the data from the model. Some attacks can extract uh, particular parameters of the model, so we can actually like steal someone's uh, model remotely. And the third area is uh, injections. Uh, here we have different types of injecting data into a training set uh, so that the system will be trained with some kind of malicious, malicious data. Um, and the top three attacks from this list are actually uh, evasion, yeah, uh, or it's also called adversarial examples, when we fool the model's detection or uh, prediction. Uh, the second place uh, by the number of uh, research papers is actually poisoning, when we retrain the model with kind of malicious data. And in the, in the third place, we have membership inference. Uh, this attack allows us to uh, guess if a particular uh, example uh, was in the training dataset. So let's quickly uh, look at the uh, attack examples. Uh, so evasion attack. Uh, it's actually, if you, what, like you see in the picture, when we have some kind of uh, picture of a pig and we want uh, the system to recognize this pig as airliner. So how we can do that? There are a, a lot of different approaches, like mathematical approaches, probably more than 100 different types of attacks. Uh, but simply saying, we, um, we discover, first of all, we're trying to discover the most important pixels that affect output uh, and then we, we actually change those pixels a little bit uh, and craft malicious, uh, malicious Im image that can uh, fool the model. So after that the model makes wrong prediction. Um, so the method of uh, finding the particular pixels and finding the values of those particular uh, pixels, uh, the methods are uh, very different, and but this is a topic for like a uh, more uh, detailed uh, discussion because there are hundreds of different uh, types of attacks, like how to do that. Um, then we have a poisoning attack. In a poisoning attack. Uh, our goal is actually 
to somehow retrain the system so that the system will change decision boundary and and then you know think that the, the target example uh, will actually change the class. So to do that, uh, we need to obtain some training data. Uh, we need to choose some target instance from the train data. Then we we make uh, changes to this example to produce a malicious example. Uh, and then so we, we retrain the data and this kind of poison poisoning actually ship the decision boundary in such a way so that our our target uh, now will be in a different class. So this is how we can uh, for example bypass the spam uh, spam detection system. Yeah we just uh, change the, the normal uh, spam uh, and do kind of poisoning attack. Uh, the, the next example is a membership inference attack. Uh, our goal here is to uh, understand if the particular example was in the training set. Like um, for example, there is a website which can collect um, your data, like uh, your uh, picture of your face, and then train their face recognition system based on your data. And you want to be sure that they don't use your uh, face during the training. So what you can do, uh, you can create your neural network that produce uh, two uh, different types of uh, probability vectors uh, by testing the, the target network. So you, what you can do, you, you, you take the training data and, uh, and then uh, you put this data in, the, in the, your uh, target neural network and you collect all the uh, probability vectors. Then you took some non-training data and then you collect uh, these prob uh, probability vectors uh, from non-training data. Then you create some kind of uh, your own attack network. And this attack network, uh, tr tr uh, you train it to classify uh, the data from training data from training set and from non-training set by uh, training this model uh, by showing them probability vectors from training and non-training data. And then when you have this uh, attack network, now you can take your own picture and send it to your attack network and most probably this attack network will tell you if this uh, uh, the picture of your face is actually came from training or non-training data. This is how you can understand if the target network uh, actually used your uh, face. And there are other uh, approaches uh, to, to do that. Okay, well, uh, we have a, um, a little bit of understanding of uh, attacks. Now uh, let's look at the assessment, so how we can assess systems. And uh, this is, was the example of just the case study that uh, the, the company, one of the smart home uh, solution providers asked us to tell them which um, camera and uh, algorithm is uh, the most secure for implementing the facial recognition system. And the problem is, the problem was that there were over 2,000 different research papers about AI security, and all of those papers have different uh, uh, attacks and different 
models, different data sets uh, in different environments. Uh, and there are no clear understanding of like a, a, a real world if the real attack is really possible because some of the attacks were just based on the uh, images of people not the real you know facial recognition systems uh, and so on so in order to to test this solution first of all uh, we should understand uh, how to attack it and to to create some kind of to attack uh, for example facial recognition system we should answer a number of questions the first one like what is the goal if the goal is misclassification so just to hide your face from facial recognition system or you go to bypass biometric uh, security so you want to make your face look like uh, someone else's face so is it a misclassification or a target misclassification? Then we have different constraints because if we talk about the digital world, like the website uh, checking the image of your face, uh, this is one class of... Uh, so here one class of attacks is possible. For example, you, have, you can change each pixel like a little bit, but if we talk about the physical world, uh, uh, we cannot, you know, change pixels there uh, because uh, in the physical world you need to, to have like a, a real patches on your face uh, because if you change a few pixels, then you have some camera distortion and so on, so your attack will not work. Okay, we know some kind of constraints, but then we need to create some form of uh, for the, our attack. Uh, so if it's a fa again facial recognition bypass, we need to either create glasses or lens or mask or something. Yeah, then we need to think about the algorithm. What kind of algorithm we use to produce these uh, those glasses, adversarial glasses? And then we need to think about the robustness of, of those glasses because uh, if you conducted the attack, you probably know that like, like, uh, you need like uh, those pixels in red color, but when you print it, the color is quite different and you need to deal with all those robustness issues like inconsistency of colors, then you have different positional glasses and so on and so forth. And then uh, we have model, and everything like a, a lot of things really uh, depend on the model because, uh, like, what kind of data set you use, what is the model architecture, what is the model input or, or output, and like, how, how do you test this model? Is it was, if it's a white box testing or if it's a black box testing, uh, and so on. So a, a lot of questions actually uh, you need to answer to understand, uh, to, to, to check different models security. And then of course we have environment because even if you can break any uh, model uh, in the lab, uh, when you transfer it to the real environment, you have issues like uh, different uh, lights and brightness and distance to objects. Uh, we have some device features like uh, different cameras have different color rendering and resolution quality and different preprocessor features like codex and data transfer compression and so on. So we need to take all this into account when we do the actual AI security testing. So I can say that this, this is not uh, simple. Uh, this is a really like a complex uh, task. Uh, but this is the only way how you can really um, check if your uh, AI solution is first of all vulnerable and like this is the real threat. And once you uh, assess your system, your next question is how to defend it. And here we have uh, 
four approaches. The first approach is a kind of security assessment and it's a prediction stage. Uh, here we have like uh, testing against different types of attacks or uh, different verification methods. Um, the, this approach is uh, quite easy to apply because some of the attacks are available and you can test against those attacks. Uh, this approach is more or less transferable because you can apply like some of the attacks for um, uh, different uh, types of machine uh, AI systems. Uh, but for example, the attack testing is really uh, limited. Uh, so if you test for one uh, attack, it doesn't mean that it's not vulnerable for other attack. And if we talk about the verification methods, they are uh, more precise, but they are very slow. So you can look at this area as a penetration testing, like application security for AI. Uh, then we have uh, prevention uh, approaches like modification of input, for example, JPEG compression for all images or a new um, type of uh, deep learning module or uh, a modified way how to train the system, for example, adversarial training, when you add adversarial examples to your training set. Um, those approaches are, in general, are very good, uh, but the issue is that they are uh, task specific. So if you modify input with JPEG compression, you know, it only uh, can be applicable to images and particular types of images and so on. And also those approaches are quite complex. So if you, if you want to modify your model, yeah, we, you have some advantages, but you also have some disadvantages. This is like uh, different types of hard, uh, hardening and vulnerability management kind of uh, approach for AI, if you compare it with traditional um, security solutions. Uh, then we have a detection approach. We can detect uh, by supervised uh, learning uh, attacks that we know or by unsupervised learning attacks that we don't know. Um, a number of methods are really good. Uh, I, I say a number because there are a lot of different detect approaches, but some of them really good. And they are more or less easy to implement. You don't need to you know, change your model or something. Unfortunately, in, it can be too late to detect attack because it's already uh, like, uh, e exploited. So sometimes it can be too late to, to detect attacks. And some of the detection methods can be inapplicable to your uh, solution. So you can look at this as a like, security monitoring or threat detection type of solutions for AI. And respond, uh, those are um, also different approaches. Uh, currently there are very few pa papers in this area, but they exist. They mostly about like counter-attacking or online retraining or some ways to um, kind of honeypot approaches to fool the attacker. Uh, those approaches are really unusual, so they're quite hard to bypass because attackers don't even expect it. But unfortunately, they're much harder to implement uh, comparing to other approaches and in some cases they're really in, uh, un unpredictable. So you can look at the also approaches like incident response or like uh, real-time application security protection and kind of WAF uh, for AI solutions. So uh, as a result uh, for AI security lifecycle, uh, I would say that all of those approaches are important. Uh, just in the particular direction, like in direction which is presented here. So you should start with kind of predicting, uh, like conduct some kind of security assessment and understand what are the risks. The next step is to apply some kind of fixes uh, to prevent those risks. Uh, 
also the next step is to apply some kind of detection mechanisms to monitor and thread, uh, uh, monitor threats and anomalies. And finally, uh, some kind of responsive measures to react and mitigate and retrain and so on. So uh, thanks for listening and I hope you uh, now have at least a little bit more understanding on uh, AI security. And if you have any questions, I'm here uh, to answer them. And you can always write me. Uh, you can write on this address or uh, uh, to alex at adverso.ai. And I love to talk about the AI security. So thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for joining. For joining. Um, if you want to you know, uh, be part of our uh, team, you also can uh, write me and we're hiring. So thank you uh, again and have a nice day.